Good day, everybody. The title I've given to my message today is the following. The battle is not yours, but God's. I think I have mentioned before that for my daily devotions, I use our daily bread. I receive the message every day by email, and it originates in the United States. I don't know how far in advance it is written, but I'm sure it must be quite a few weeks, if not longer. It amazes me that often the message I read in the morning, although written well in advance and in another country, is so relevant to that particular day in my life. This is what happened not only on one day over the last two weeks, but for me, it happened at least six times starting on Friday the 16th of July, the Friday at the end of the week of mayhem that we experienced here in KwaZulu-Natal and in Gauteng. I felt those messages really spoke to me during that awful time. Who knew which messages would be relevant to our situation in South Africa at that time? I believe that God knew we or at least I, would need to read those messages and be encouraged by them. I would like to share a brief outline of the messages with you, and I pray that you will be encouraged as I was. After each message, I will say a short prayer. The first message was entitled, Navigating the Storms of Life, based on Psalm 43. My goodness, I'm sure we all felt as though we were caught in a storm as we watched the rioting and looting caught on camera and shown on TV and social media. At about the same time, someone I know tested positive for COVID two unexpected storms in my life. When we are faced with storms and tragedies, we could well say with the psalmist in Psalm 43 and verse 2, You are God, my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? Like the psalmist, we want to feel safe in God's presence. But to get there, we need God's guidance which we read of in verse 3 of that psalm. Send forth your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. We read that we navigate the storms by the light of God's truth revealed in Scripture through his Holy Spirit. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you've not left me alone in the challenging and disorientating circumstances of life. Please help me to rely on you to guide my steps today. Amen. The message the next day was entitled Prejudice and Forgiveness based on Acts chapter 10, verses 23 to 28. What a message to read at that time. This passage in Acts tells about Peter being called to the house of Cornelius, the centurion. When he arrived there, the house was full of people who were Gentiles. According to Jewish law, people should not have gone there and spoken to them at all. However, Peter told them that God had shown him that he should not call any man impure or unclean. Peter put into practice what God had shown and taught him and changed his own life as well as the lives of the Gentiles he encountered. I believe that many South Africans have had to change their attitudes and thoughts about people of other faiths and racial groups 
as they have joined each other on patrol in traveled areas and received help and food from many different people. In one day, those of us who live on the church property here at St. Thomas received food from a man of a different faith to ours and then more food from people from a different denomination. Have our hearts been changed because of our experiences? I believe that many people in this country will have overcome prejudice and asked forgiveness in the last couple of weeks. Let us pray. Dear God, search my heart and show me where I need to change. Amen. The next message was entitled, God's Restoring Ways. In Hosea chapter 4, we learn how God's promise through Hosea was given to restore Israel. In verse 7, we read, People will dwell again in his shade. They will flourish like the grain. They will blossom like the vine. There are so many positive stories and reports of how businesses and people's lives are being restored after all the devastation. I know of a couple whose business was completely destroyed. They have made the decision to try to build it up again because they employ eight people, all breadwinners. They are not only restoring their business, but the lives and families of their employees. So we pray, Father God, by your grace, may we all work together to restore hope and life to those whose lives have been devastated. Amen. The fourth message was entitled, God's Power on Display, based on Job chapter 38 and verses 24 to 38, and chapter 42 and verse 5. Poor Job, his life had really fallen apart. His children were dead, He'd lost all his wealth, he was sick, his friends didn't understand him, and then his wife told him to abandon his faith. Then in chapter 24 and verse 1, Job asked God the question, why? We read in chapter 38 and verse 1, Then the Lord answered Job out of the storm. So Job had this great storm raging in his life, but God spoke to him out of that storm. God asked Job question after question, helping him realize that God is in control of all the physical attributes of the world, like the sea, the day and the night, as well as all the living creatures in the world. Throughout chapters 38 to 41, God asks Job questions and helps him get to know who he is, so that in chapter 42 and verse 5, Job responds, My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. May we also have our eyes opened, so that we are able to get to know that God, who created the world, is big enough and loving enough to take care of us too. We pray, God, help me to see how big you are and that if you are big enough to create and control lightning, you're big enough to help me through life's challenges. Amen. The fifth message is entitled, Seeking God's Help, based on 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verses 5 to 12, and chapter 15, verses 9 and 15. 
This passage tells about Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, facing a huge army. So he prays to God, asking him to save him and his people. God hears his prayer and answers him. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. That verse really spoke to me. The battle I feel I am fighting is not mine, but God's. It is not going to overwhelm me because nothing is too hard for God. And so we pray, Creator God, you made the world and all that's in it. Please restore order and save your people whom you love. Amen. <clears throat> then the last message is entitled, God Carries Us, based on Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verses 26 to 31. The Israelites had grumbled to Moses about how God had let them suffer by making them wander around in the desert for such a long time. In these verses in Deuteronomy, Moses reminds the people about how God had looked after them during that time, providing food and water, and by guiding them with a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night. He said, There you saw how the Lord your God carried you, as a father carries his son, all the way you went until you reached this place. That is such a comforting picture of our loving God who carries us as a father carries his son. We remember that when our, we need to remember that when our faith is challenged. And so we pray, loving God, help me to remember that you carry me even when I don't feel it. Thank you for your strength and compassion. Amen. So there you are. Six messages to us from God. He guides us and helps us navigate the storms of life. He teaches us how to overcome prejudice and practice forgiveness. He restores what has been devastated and shows us the way forward. He opens our eyes to see his power around us. When we are feeling weak, and our faith is challenged, we can ask God for help and he will encourage us and carry us through. I pray that these messages have been as helpful and encouraging to you as they have been to me. And now I pray this blessing for all of you today. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into your doors. God bless. Bye-bye.
Yeah.